Hey, good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got y'all some updates on what's going on with Major Hurricane Ida. I'm going to let you know where the weather is going to be intensifying any further. It's already, literally, I just did a stream when we found that it was literally a Cat 5 already, but it's in the Gulf of Mexico. That's not going to be land uh, impacts. But I will show you what is going on right now and what is going to be happening in the future because I am showing a weakening. I am showing that it. It, it will still be a major hurricane landfall. You still have hurricane force winds and sustained winds until 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. However, it will not be a Cat 4 or a Cat 5 damage landfall. I mean, it's not a whole bunch more of a difference. I mean, it really does make a difference, but once you hit major, hurricane status is dangerous enough. But as of right now, like say these wind bands that are coming, these rain bands that are coming through now, through the North Shore, they're high 40 miles per hour rain bands that's pretty much what i see is high 40 miles per hour rain bands coming with this plus you have your tornadoes that are popping up right by lower alabama and it's going towards mississippi so there is a, a, a lot of issues as far as what's going on with this storm now to take a good look at it you can see that it was it was that black you see leaving the whole thing was black intensifying greatly but now it just went past the deepest warmest part of the Gulf of Mexico and now it's going look at it it's on a weakening phase guys it's not going to be super <laughs> weak it's still going to be a I believe a major hurricane on impact major hurricane is 111 miles per hour at the same time as it comes on land it's going to be very rough it will downgrade after about 10 hours it will take about 10 hours and it will be hurricane force sustained winds in the boot of Louisiana all the way to one o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you look on the cloud tops, yes, very strong, very breathing, very good on the north, northwest, and the southwest side. But if you look at the east side of it now, it's starting to try and get a little more strength right there in the last shot and uh, higher altitudes trying to really pop up there and get some breath. But you can see it weakening down on the east side of the storm. Is going through a weakening phase now. It's cutting off part of the eye. You can see it cut off right there. Like it's almost trying to do a recycle of the eye. And if it does that, it'd be really dangerous for the hurricane because it will be somewhat weakening as it does that. And it might not have enough time to form back up. But it definitely is trying to tighten up, it's trying to strengthen up. You can see it cutting off that eye and do what it can. And then you get some black after that. So it is trying to strengthen up. But for a moment, when it left from that deep ocean heat content to a little bit cooler waters where it does a deep welling and pulls up the, the warm waters, it's actually going to be cooler waters It's going to be pulling up. And that's affecting it a little bit. Uh, it's not going to knock it down where it's going to be some tropical storm. It's still going to be a major hurricane. So let me show you everything that I have for you just to show you the information. Right now, Ida is at 933 millibars. It has 150 miles per hour sustained winds. And that was the last reading uh, that we had of the most intensity. And matter of fact, the last fly through shows less. I, I will show you. Plus, you still have disturbance one that is still going to spin out, go nowhere. You have tropical depression 11 that is still going nowhere. And you have tropical depression 10 that's still going north. Disturbance two. This is that next wave I was telling you about. It has 80% in the next five days. This is the one that flies through the Caribbean, gets hit by the cold front that we have around the 2nd or the 3rd. And around the 4th and 5th, it bumbles around the Gulf because it's trying to pick itself back up. It just got whopped. And I'm showing there's a couple of chances for it to either go to Texas, a couple for Texas, and even go back towards Louisiana and Mississippi by the 6th or 7th. So it could be a 1-2 punch. I will stay on top of it for you. Now for today, not only is there a tornado warning for the south, we also have it for Michigan, a 2% chance. And for the south, you have a 2% chance in the green and a 5% chance in the brown. This is for those big rain bands that are whipping by with the convection and it's easy to spin up a tornado, especially when the daytime heating gets involved. Here's your cities that are involved in the tornado warnings. And the latest on major hurricane Ida, it is moving northwest at 15 miles per hour. So it has slowed down one miles per hour. Still predicted to be a major hurricane on land, which is at least 111 miles per hour. I'm not showing a Cat 4 or a Cat 5, guys. I'm telling you, it's on a weakening phase from that 150 that we saw. But it will be a hurricane all the way until 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. It still will be a hurricane force winds, sustained winds 
of at least 74 miles per hour in the boot of Louisiana. Now, tropical storm force winds, you're definitely in the 100% area in all this purple. You will feel tropical storm force winds at least in this section. And then it goes down 90, 80, 70, all the way to 10 for this big area. But you can see how much smaller everything is getting. You are going to be feeling 60 miles per hour winds in this 100% area right here for sure as well. And you can see it goes down to 90 once you get to this outer edge right here. So this outer edge is definitely going to be tropical storm force winds. And you definitely got 60 miles per hour winds in this purple. And the hurricane force winds have shrunk. You definitely have hurricane force winds in all this purple and a 90% chance in all this dark red for hurricane force winds. Your chances go down greatly as you go away from that. Now the rainfall amounts has gone up and there's a lot of people that needs to watch out for these rainfall amounts because it is going to the northeast. So, so far within the next three days, you have one to two inches of rainfall in this light green, two to four inches in the dark green. You got four to six inches in this yellow and six to 10 inches in this orange for flash flooding. And you have also 10 to 15 inches in this red and 15 to 20 inches in all this purple for heavy rainfall, guys. This is going to be a very serious wind gust and flooding event. Even your storm surge has gone up, especially from Port Fouchon all the way to the mouth of the Mississippi River. 12 to 16 feet is expected. And then you can see what it is. It's still the same around the sides here. Now for your excessive rainfall outlook for pretty much the whole map, guys. You have marginal in the green. You have slight in the yellow. Moderate risk in all this red. And you have this high risk for all this pink. Through Monday morning, this is your marginal in the green. Your slight in the yellow. Your moderate in the red. And your high risk in the pink. Tuesday morning, your marginal in the green. Slight risk in the yellow. And you'll have a moderate risk in all this red. And through Wednesday morning, it's going to move towards the central of the U.S. and the northeast a little more. You got your marginal in the green, the slight risk in the yellow, and you still got your moderate in this red. New track does show that it will go straight over towards Maryland, Delaware, and straight by Jersey. So y'all going to be getting rainfall from this as well. Now, if you look at the intensity guidance, it just that's, now if you look at the intensity guidance that just come out, this one right here is showing a Cat 5. That's all by itself because it was on a strengthening phase. But now you can see almost all the ensembles show from here on out it's going to be weakening but it's still going to be a major landfall because anywhere from 12 12 hours away it is either going to be still a category four most of the ensembles i mean most of them show that it will either be a major landfall at high strength or it'll barely be a major category three to a high-end category two and I have found 109, have found 114. So that's kind of around the same. A category three would be 111. I'm telling you, the 150 was the highest it's going to be. It is somewhat on a down phase, a weakening phase. Not to no tropical storm like we want. Still will be a strong hurricane, but it is weakening. Now with the latest run, according to the Euro, 119 to 120 miles per hour. Sustained winds is the strongest this is going to get. And you see, as it gets on land, it's already down to 100. So you have 90 and 100 in all this red. You see this? This is where your hurricane forest winds come into play. And then once it gets on land, it goes down greatly. But it will be hurricane forest winds at least till 1 o'clock in the morning for tomorrow. Now, your wind gust is where this is playing a big factor. Like I said, this is going to be a main wind gust and a flooding event now. Uh, it has gone down. It is to 152 miles per hour wind gusts right before landfall. That's the strongest point. Then it starts downgrading. It stays real strong. You see south of Louisiana, especially near Homa, you're going to be over 100 miles per hour wind gusts. And it stays there for hours, up to 120 miles per hour wind gusts now, all evening, all night long, finally going down by tomorrow morning. Still 100 miles per hour wind gusts. That is going to hang around for quite some time. Then it finally goes down late tomorrow morning. So 100 miles per hour plus wind gusts, 120 miles per hour plus wind gusts is going to be around all day long. Now, according to the Euro, the, the rainfall amounts is heavy. It's 18 inches right here. It's growing a little north of New Orleans, according to the Euro. And then you have all the way from 6 to 8 inches and all this brown from Mississippi and all this red is all 3 to 5 inches. 
So all this brown, and especially all this shade of gray and purple, is the heaviest part of this flooding. The GFS shows that it's only at 16 inches, and it's going to be offshore with the heaviest part of the rainfall. That is, the part that's actually north is about 13 to 14 inches. Still very, very much terrible and bad effects. But it shows that the heaviness of Mississippi is not as heavy. It's not showing a 7 to 10 inches. It's showing it's more like a 3 to 5 as it lightens up towards Tennessee and Kentucky. And the GFS only brings it about 115 miles per hour. And that's not even on land. That's offshore. Uh, on land, it will have 100 miles per hour winds, sustained winds as it comes on. But it's not affecting great effects. It's showing everything will go down to tropical storm strength winds with hurricane force wind gusts. So it's a little back and forth, even though it still shows 100 miles per hour winds. It don't show that all that will be on land for all that long. That's according to the GFS. But a Euro does show that it will be 100 miles per hour winds all the way to at least 100, uh, all the way to at least one o'clock tomorrow morning, which confirms what Noah is saying. So I believe the Euro. The GFS agrees that it will be 153 miles per hour wind gusts, just like the Euro is saying that it will be strong wind gusts. Now, so far the power outages is 16,000 for Louisiana. Michigan has 30,000. Minnesota has 11,000. And California has 18,000. But according to the hurricane, so far Louisiana has 16,000 homes without power. And here's the latest on the recon data. So when we were streaming, it picked up 140 knot winds on the west side of the storm, which is the 150 miles per hour that they saw. And on the east side, it was 135 miles per hour winds. And then when it ran through again, it went down. From the west side, it went down to 120 uh, knot winds. And on the east side, it was at 125 knot winds. So the storm is on a gradual weakening phase, guys. Now this wave is going to get hit by the second or third by this cold front and by the time we get to the 4th of September it is bumbling around the Gulf of Mexico. And the potential options for this storm is either to go through the Gulf and intensify and go towards lower Texas or it could be like this one right here on E7 where it can finally get together and go towards northern Texas a lot weaker of a storm. Or it could be like E16 where it takes another day later, gets itself together, another wave meets up with it, it gives it energy, and it could head it towards Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida. Even E2 shows that it takes a while to get itself together, and it could go right for Louisiana and Mississippi, where they're dealing with Ida right now. All right, I'm going to put it on this so we can see a little bit closer, so you can see the eye, how you can see how the cooler waters now is affecting the eye on the east side of the storm. So these storms cannot wrap all the way around and continue the intensification, guys. It cannot get all the way around. It's warm enough to sustain what it has now, but it's not warm enough to intensify further. So I will do my tropical update this afternoon, of course, guys, as usual. I just want to get off the stream real quick. I just wanted to stream kind of to alert people what's going on because it was intensifying greatly. But now it's showing it's going down. You can see it for yourself right there. Matter of fact, if we put it on convection, you will really see that the convection is lost on the east side of the storm. It's trying to come back, but it can't come back because of the temperature of the water. It's doing some deep welling, and when it does deep welling, pulling that uh, cooler waters from deeper in the Gulf of Mexico up, now it's not that deep ocean heat content no more. Now it's cooler deep down there and it's pulling up cooler waters and it's affecting it. You can see it on the east side of the eye. It's trying to intensify while it's doing that. That's why you're still seeing reds and blacks. Then you'll see a wave get spit out from the eye of some very much weaker uh, energies, very much cooler waters, and it's trying to cut it off. But the more it deep wells, the more it's going to keep cool pulling this water up. This is on a weakening phase. It will still be major impacts. But God bless every single one of you that are involved in this hurricane. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today with this update that we have. Uh, right now I'm showing those rain bands coming across. are about 50 to 55 miles per hour wind gusts in those rain bands. So be very careful of that. The wind gusts and the flooding is going to be the major issue of this storm. For the first 6 to 10 hours, the winds are going to be really bad uh, for southeast Louisiana. But after that, it will slowly go away. But still, I pray for your safety for every single one of you. God bless you all.
May Yahweh keep you safe. May keep you and your family blessed and out of harm's way of the storm. We love you all. We want you all to be safe. So please take every precaution you can take. Hopefully you did leave and heed the warning a couple weeks ago. Today I want to read Psalm 76. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The sloth-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. At thy right at thy, at thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a deep sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah, Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow, and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Amen. God bless you all going through this. I do pray for your safety. I can't say this enough. This wind gust and this flooding is going to be the main issue of this storm because it's going to last for so long. I do wish the best for all of you. God bless you. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. I will see you this afternoon for the update.